we are going to go through these slides really, really fast uh, because we've talked about a lot of this stuff. But what we're going to talk about next is things that we have learned, how do the bring ups and things that are lessons. So some of these I'm going to slow down on because I think they're really important. Other ones we're just going to bypass. The first one is system. You may have noticed over these past two days, I've used the word system more than once. That wasn't by mistake. These are high energy. I hate the word complex because complex is scary. But they are involved systems. You have to design them. You have to make sure every piece works with each other. Back in the day when you just threw a 120 amp alternator on and a couple of golf cart batteries, didn't matter. Very forgiving. Today, if you don't do it right, $20,000 and a burning refrigerator. When you think of this stuff, you cannot think about, here's my wake speed regular. You have to think of the wake speed regular as a part of the system. The batteries, the alternator, the regular, the engine, the BMS, the solar panel controllers, the AC, you know, the AC, all that stuff you have to design. That's why this class that you're taking doesn't happen in a week. That's why it takes months. These are complex systems. And you are going to be dependent upon to design and deliver reliable systems. The wake speed I'm hoping you're learning is a very capable tool to allow you to accomplish that. Engine loading, I think we've talked about this four or five times. Uh, high reliability, we talked about this a little bit, things you can do uh, as you're designing your systems when you want to go that step beyond. Go through and, re and review in the expert mode your required sensors. If the alternator temperature is important, make the alternator temperature sensor a required sensor. And know that if it doesn't exist, the default behavior is we'll go into half power mode. You can learn that in the Bible. Look at all the required sensors, check off the ones that are reasonable that you think are important, and look at the behavior and decide if your default behavior is good or if you want to have it to toss a fault. I will tell you my personal opinion, if you design a reliable system, you should never have a failure in this stuff. I tend to toss faults. I want that service call. You may not want the service call, so you can take the default behavior. Another reason you may not want the service call is this is, though, is, this is a passage maker. And if they're halfway between here and uh, you know, the English coast, it's okay if the regular runs in half power mode. We'll get there, right? We'll accept the default behavior. So think about that. Another, oh, and one specific problem area on this is the required sensor for the current shunt. It's hard for us to know where you actually have a current shunt there. So what we actually do is we look for current value indicated, I think five amps is our trigger, plus or minus. We want to see an indication of current going through that shunt sometime at the startup of the regulator. And if we don't see it, we'll toss an error. It's all documented in the, in, in, in the Bible. But that one's a tough one. Hope, a lot of these stalls, and especially the more advanced ones, you're not going to use a current shunt anywhere. If you do, you go put it on the alternator. It's not going to really matter whether it's there or not. Right? But just know that particular one is problematic. Um, BMS aggregation. This is a very unique feature of the wake speed regular. Do you remember one of the very first examples I told you about the uh, vessel that went uh, voyage, uh, did the passage to Hawaii? It had two, BMS, two battery systems in the bow and the lazarette. The one in the bow went offline. Wake speed regular was aggregating those BMSs, and when they were both there, it behaved in a way appropriate for both of them. When one went away, it dynamically adjusted. There's a small number of batteries that we can do that with. Today, that would be lithionics, that would be MG Energy, and others I can't tell you about. Those guys can do BMS aggregation. It's a good value. I will guarantee you. Dragonfly Intelligence will be able to do BMS aggregation. It's a good value. Um, get home mode. This is another interesting advanced high reliability feature. And we've, 
it's kind of a two-edged sword. Um, because when you put these advanced features in, and then operators are running, and these things enable, and they don't understand what happened, they're going to say, what's wrong? Why is this thing not working? We have get home mode defined for the Victron Lynx BMS. You could do other BMSs as well. And here's what the deal is. If we depend on a CAN connected BMS to get our information, the question is, what do you want to have happen if that BMS goes away, if we lose that connection? Now, you could make it a required sensor and you could have the regular fault out. Or you could have, uh, I forget what our option it is, but you could have it go into a, actually I think what it does is it goes into float mode, is the default behavior. Because I think that's how we do with the Victron links. Now, in that case, you still want to make sure that the regulator is not going to exhibit a uncontrolled disconnect, so that's why we also connect up the white wire on the Victron links. So in normal operation, we communicate via the CAN. In get home mode, what we do is we realize we've lost that CAN connection. We go into a fixed voltage mode, and we've actually picked the target voltage of around 40% state of charge for lithium batteries, roughly, because we're a voltage only regulator, right? And we depend on this wire to tell us it's okay to charge. Now, if we lose the CAN connection, and we lose this double fault, then we obviously shut things down. But what this lets you do when you're halfway across the Pacific, if for some reason the CAN bus went sideways, it lets you get home. You won't get home with fully charged batteries, but you won't be calling CETO and trying to convince them to make a 12 day journey to get you, you know, somewhere uh, east of the Azores, right? So that's another advanced feature you can do. Um, these are some of the, I'm sure there's a lot of other creative things you can do with a wake speed regulator. It's a tool and uh, who knows, maybe you'll come up with some other ideas. But these are some of the things that we, we have already figured out. Uh, we're now going to enter this phase of the real world things that we've observed. Actually, I'm going to stop right now. Do you have any questions up to this point? point because we're really starting to wrap up a bit here. Any questions popping in your head at this point? Okay. These are now some of the real world experiences that we have found that are problems with the wake speed. And we've talked about a few of them. It's a very configurable product. People configure it wrong. People go into expert mode and reconfigure it. You know, it's most of them are configuration. I think 60% of the calls to get to me are configuration. 40% of the calls to get to me, they haven't hooked all the bloody wires up. <laughs> Yo, RTFM, hook up all the wires, the required wires, please. But these are other things. So customer education. A lot of customers, and they're smart people. I mean, I'm not saying people are dumb. They're, just, they're smart people, but they're not expert. They're not, this isn't their area of space. So they're used to how voltage regulators work. They look at how the behavior of a system with a wake speed in it behaves, and they don't understand it. They don't understand that we're not putting out voltage, we're not putting out power, because the BMS has asked for us to stop charging the battery. They don't understand that their 180 amp alternator is only putting out 40 amps because the alternator is getting too hot. We do all this data and we do all this assessment to decide how to drive the system, and people just don't understand it. They just say, look, it's not working. That's probably one of the bigger things that you're going to have to do. Spend some time talking with your customer. Tell them that this is an advanced system, it's highly engineered, it's highly reliable, and it's going to behave in certain ways that may not be intuitive to you at, one, at original. Now, it could be that something's gone wrong. It could be that something's wrong or broken, or it could be that you found a bug, or it could be that it's configured differently. I'm not saying all cases are customer education, but there's a lot of them that are. VRM is probably your best friend. Because what you can do when you have a customer say, I don't understand what's going on, log in the VRM, see what's going on with the system, look to see where the battery is at, look to see where our charging sources do, look to see what the wake speed is doing, and try to ascertain what's happening in the system, and try to educate the customer, okay? Um, 
both of these examples I've already given you. These are real life examples of customers who said, this product's defective, I need a new one. And we've covered both of these, right? The first one is because the batteries are out of balance and the battery said stop charging, and guess what? We kept you from bringing your boat down. The second one is the alternator had really horrid cooling to it, and guess what? We kept you from bringing up your alternator. But in every single case, it didn't meet the customer's expectation of how a voltage-only regulator would have behaved. And that's why it resulted in a service call.